All right, today we are going to dive into compression a little bit deeper. We're gonna explore two of the parameters that we find on really every compressor out there, and we're gonna talk about how we use them, how do they work hand in hand with each other, and how do we set them to achieve you know, get the results that we want to out of our mixes. So there's five controls on a regular compressor. This is the threshold, ratio, attack, release, and makeup gain. And in this video, we're gonna talk about threshold and ratio. And I picked these two because of how they work hand in hand with each other. So we're gonna dive pretty deep into them and I'm gonna help you understand how they work together and how to use them in our mixes. So let me open up a project here so you can see I've got one track, I have a compressor open here, and on this one track I have a tone generator. And this tone generator plugin will just generate a, a consistent um, note. Um, so when I turn it on here you can see on this meter you see it starts up, it's not bouncing around there because it's a consistent tone, okay? And we're gonna use this tone um, and start to play with the threshold and the ratio to see kind of how they interact with each other. So before we do that, let's define what the threshold and the ratio even do in the first place, all right? So the threshold is the point on the meter right here that we can set this point and that's gonna say, okay, everything above this threshold is what's gonna to be compressed. Everything below the threshold is going to be untouched. So if we um, have a really quiet signal, we're going to have to bring this threshold way down in order to actually start to affect that signal, if that makes sense. Okay, so the ratio then um, is kind of the other part of threshold. So once once we say, okay, this part of the this part of the signal is going to get compressed, we then have to answer, well, how hard is it gonna get compressed? That's what the ratio does. So the ratio right now on this compressor is set to a one to one ratio. So basically for every one dB um, of signal that crosses that threshold, it's gonna let one out. Well, if you do the math, that means it's gonna do no compression. Um, so we're gonna have to turn this ratio down also before it starts actually doing anything. But what you'll notice here is this signal generator is making this consistent tone. You can actually hear it here as well. It's just a consistent tone there. I'm gonna leave it off because that'll get annoying after a while. But you can still see it on this meter. It's still coming through the system. Um, but you can see if I take this threshold and I run it up and down, it doesn't do anything by itself. And I take this ratio and I run it up and down, it doesn't do anything by itself either. There's no gain reduction shown on this middle section here. And the reason is because the threshold, when it's set to zero, remember everything above that threshold is what's being compressed. Well, there's nothing above that threshold when it's at zero, so there's gonna be nothing there. And then when it's set to one to one, it's not doing anything there either. So there's no compression happening when the threshold is at zero or the ratio is at one. We have to move both of those things off of that point in order to get any gain reduction, okay? And just to kind of review again, the reason why we use a compressor is to control the dynamic range of a signal. If we've got something that's way too loud in some parts, way too quiet in other parts, then um, we need a compressor to reduce that range and then get that track under control. So when we talk about gain reduction, which is what a compressor creates, the, we're reducing that gain, that signal. Um, so when I say that term, you'll know what I'm talking about there. Let's just say I want to, I have a track here, I've got my signal running, and I want to get about 6 dB of gain reduction on this track. Well, there's two ways to do it. One, I can pull this threshold down, but again, it's not going to do anything until I start adjusting the ratio as well. I can pull that threshold down well into the signal here, okay? And then I can take this ratio and start to kind of drag it down until I get, see, about 6 dB of gain reduction there, okay? So I've got about 6 dB of gain reduction, but my ratio is still very, very gentle. Um, it's a 1.3 to 1 ratio there, but I've pulled the threshold way down. So I can do it that way, or I can do it the opposite way. Let's reset this, and I'm going to pull the ratio way down. Let's do a 10 to 1 ratio. Then I can pull this threshold down until I get that same 6 dB 
of gain reduction. All right, so there we go. But those are two different situations where I have exactly the same amount of gain reduction, but the threshold and the ratio are in two different places for both situations. So that's what I'm saying. Both of these work in tandem together, but you can achieve the same result in two different places of the threshold and ratio. So that kind of begs the question, well, how do we know which setup to use? How do we know when to leave the threshold kind of where it is and then pull the ratio down? Or how do we know when to pull the threshold down and leave the ratio up? Okay, well, to answer that, you have to actually understand kind of what we're trying to accomplish with compression in the first place. I'm gonna reset this, um, turn that off. All right, we're gonna move to a different project and I'm gonna show you, this will just kind of help provide a visual of what's going on. When the threshold is set all the way up here, the further I bring this, this cursor down or the threshold down, the more it's gonna start getting into the meat of the signal down here, okay? So if I put the threshold right about there, it's only gonna cut off like the top parts. It's only gonna reduce the, the gain, the signal on these top peaks up here, okay? So that would be an example of setting the threshold higher, and then to get that same amount of gain reduction, you'd have to crank the ratio way up in order to get that gain reduction, but not get into the meat of the signal down here. So let's just, let's give this a try and see what happens. I'm gonna put this about a 10 to one ratio. If I wanna get a three dB of gain reduction, let's see how far I have to bring this threshold down. Okay, so that got about three dB of gain reduction there. Threshold is at minus 22 with a 10 to one ratio, okay? If I'm gonna reset this, let's say I wanna bring this, this, um, this threshold down so I'm compressing more of the meat of this track. I wanna compress more of the signal, not just the peaks up at the top. So let's say I wanna just do maybe a two to one ratio, that's very gentle, and we're gonna do the same thing, just bring that threshold down and see where we end up in order to get three dB of gain reduction. Okay, so it's about right there, okay? So I had to bring this a lot further down in order to get that same amount of gain reduction because the ratio was much more gentle. It was only a two to one instead of about 10 to one, okay? So just understand what's going on here. If I wanna get a certain amount of gain reduction, I've gotta keep these in balance with each other. But what happens is when I set a really aggressive ratio, it's saying basically nothing is, I'm not gonna allow anything to get past me here. So if I want, let's say I wanna just trim the peaks off, I wanna just control this track to make sure it doesn't really punch way outside the limit. I'm going to use this more as a, a limiter, which is a form of a compressor, um, but usually a ratio of 10 to 1 and up is considered more limiting instead of compressing. So if I want to just trim the peaks off of this, I would set more of an aggressive ratio, and then I would just set the threshold to get the amount of gain reduction I wanted. However, if I wanted it to be much more, if I wanted to compress more of that signal and get more of a gentle, more natural compression sound instead of just chopping off those peaks, I would set this to a much more gentle, lower ratio, maybe two or three or four to one instead of that really aggressive 10 to one or something like that. And then I would end up setting this threshold a lot higher. So hopefully that kind of made sense to understand um, how we pick which version of setting the threshold versus ratio. How do we pick which way to do that? It depends on what we're trying to accomplish. If we're trying to just set a limit on it and just kind of make sure the peaks don't cross that, we're going to use a higher ratio and uh, probably a higher threshold on there. If we're trying to kind of squeeze the track as a whole and treat the whole signal, we're going to kind of put that ratio a lot more gentle and then we're going to 
you know, bring that threshold where it needs to be in order to get the amount of gain reduction that we want to get out of it. Um, so hopefully that kind of made sense. Hopefully that's helpful for you in your application. If you are trying to learn the basics of this and you're trying to really figure out compression or EQ or any of the basic components of mixing, I'd encourage you to go check out my website, themixingprocess.com, and there you're going to find my guide, The 7 Step Mix. This is a completely free downloadable guide for you that'll walk you through the seven steps that I take in every single mix that I do. Um, it'll give you a great systematic process. It'll teach you the basics of tools like this and help you get the results that you're looking for in your mix. So if that sounds like it'd be helpful for you, you can download it completely for free on my website, themixingprocess.com. If you have any questions about this, go ahead and type them in the comments below. Let me know what challenges you're having with compression, and I will do my best to answer any questions that you have. You can contact me also directly on my website, again, themixingprocess.com. But until I hear from you there, um, go be great at what you do. Contact me if you need help. I'd be happy to have that conversation with with you. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.